Welcome to Thriving Rockstar with Alex Reagan. Today, I have Leslie Hunt here. How are you doing, Leslie? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Um, awesome. So, what, what what have you been up to? Like, what's uh, what's new with you? Well, um, District 97, my progressive rock metal band, uh, we are in the final stages of mixing our fourth studio album. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. And then we're kind of figuring out how we're going to go about releasing it. So that's exciting. Um, I'm, it's kind of a slow time of year, so I'm really working on new music. I'm shedding my instrument all the time, trying to spend as a little amount of money as possible. <laughs> And just kind of surviving this like very gray, like Midwestern world that I live in. And uh, yeah, these yeah. are good though. Yeah, this is just, I like the seasons. Awesome. So. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, my whole thing on this show is, you know, providing my listeners with the habits, routines uh, that you, you know, that. For sure. That, that you're up to, um, you know, as far as like your health and lifestyle, the stuff that's less often discussed as well yeah. as like social media and things like that and what you're doing to promote yourself and uh, build mm -hmm. your brand and such. So we'll, we'll get into all of that, but let's start with, um, let's start with your habits and your, your, your health habits, really your diet. Okay. Like how do you, yeah. how do you eat? Do you have any philosophies around uh, that? I think that probably the, the one most overlooked thing that it is what we eat and, you know, if you have any medical issues whatsoever or any just ailments, it's you really should look at what you're eating first yeah. <laughs> before you look into what sort of little pill you could take to make it all better or mm -hmm. what sort of other sort of like, oh, I don't want to acknowledge the real issue here. I'm going to, you know, mask it with something else. So I eat, I'm extremely disciplined. <laughs> about food That's it's great. almost it's probably I mean so it has like a like when I was a younger I noticed such a big difference on how I felt based on what I was eating and and also just like um so I have lupus mm. and it's an it's an autoimmune disorder and an inflammatory disease so it mm really attacks my soft tissues. And so that's joints and skin. And luckily I haven't had any organ involvement. Um, but I, but so I have to eat exclusively gluten free. Mm -hmm. Um, and I quit dairy in July, mm -hmm. which was the best thing I've ever done. Um, and I've done that before, but I never did it for this reason. I did it more for like I'm a vegan, you know, but I never did it because I was like, oh, wow, I'm like making myself really hoarse and really phlegmy, you know. Right. Um, and then I also don't really eat nightshade vegetables either. Mm. That's so, um, interesting. Yeah. So and that's helpful uh, just because I do battle chronic pain. And so I have to keep um, my inflammation pretty low, mm -hmm. especially for what I do for a living. I'm basically a circus clown. So I mean, I'm just like <laughs> out there just, woo, you know, just totally, it's like this aerobic yes. job that I have. So, um, so You're I have definitely to stay animated but, on stage. Yeah. I, I can't help it. It's awesome. <laughs> so man. if I had to do that and then also feel like my body was holding me back in some way, that would be like a deal breaker. So I have to be careful. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think as a singer, it's, most directly reflected on your performance on your voice if you don't eat mm -hmm. properly oh yeah or even if you don't get enough sleep or if you were mm -hmm. too chatty the mm -hmm. night before in a loud place you know like so it's like you have to just be such a princess nightmare <laughs> like just like it's too loud in here uh they don't, you know, right. like, i gotta go to bed you know right. yeah exactly yeah, yeah, because so, if you mm -hmm. if, if you try to attack a performance with on, under the weather, you're flat, mm -hmm. you're you're doing damage, you're, you're ruining your chances of having a good gig tomorrow. You know, I mean, it's like it's mm -hmm. you have to be so careful. You're shortening your career if you think long term. <laughs> yeah, you truly are. Yeah, uh, you you mentioned uh, you're vegan. No, I was. I was it for was. about four years, okay. and then um, and then I stopped being vegan when my daughter was like two, which so seven years ago I started eating meat again, just because that's when I went gluten free. Mm. So. Interesting, yeah, because that could be tough, uh, gluten free and vegan. No, I'd be like, can I have some oxygen in a glass? Um, <laughs> 
could you could you blow on it give it some calories yeah were you vegan during your pregnancy um i did actually eat eggs okay. during my pregnancy really mm -hmm. yeah interesting so weird like addition yeah. yeah and then i and then i breastfed and didn't eat any animal products whatsoever when i was just until she was weaned hmm. and then i don't know why i just felt um it was working for me at the time but but what really changed things around is when I got rid of gluten and then I started adding a lot more protein because mm -hmm. yeah, that that was when things really started getting better. Right. So with the, with the protein, how has that affected you as far as, uh, you know, what effect has that had in your diet? Well, I think, I, you know, it's possible that if I didn't have so many other limitations, mm -hmm. I could get away with not eating meat and not feel sickly or tired or mm -hmm. you know just um but i i don't think there's a, a a chance in hell that i would ever feel that feeling of being full mm -hmm. if i didn't eat meat so i have to i feel like because it's just like i go to a, a bar or like somewhere and it's like okay i can get wings and i can get like a salad right you know and then it's just like okay please fill me up somehow so i don't get too drunk too fast <laughs> yeah sustenance you know. is definitely yeah you gotta important. soak it up with something and like now i can't even eat fries so it's like right. at least i had that you know it's sure. just it's, it's bonkers but sure. it's working do you cook so i do i cook a lot mm -hmm. what do you like i to love cook? cooking um i like to cook like as much kind of like eastern inspired food i like to do a lot of asian like indian thai oh yeah um just that kind of stuff that's like really flavorful, but still like easy to keep in my dietary restrictions. Cause rice is great for me. Um, and you know, the proteins and stuff, but like they, they, they typically aren't a very gluten or dairy, like, you know, involved cuisine. So the chances of finding a rep, a recipe that fits within my thing is pretty, so, so long as I'm not using soy sauce or anything like that. Right. I, I love Thai food. My yeah. I mean, girlfriend's so Thai. And Ooh. I go to Thailand like three, four times a year. So, Get out. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Wow. Does she have any single friends? <laughs> Men. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm cool. going there in April, actually. It's going to be oh, nice. quite awesome. Yeah, I'll be there for about yeah. a month. That'll be awesome. So, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So as far as your diet on... Mm -hmm. At home, you have more control. When, right. So how does that work when you're touring? Oh, yeah. I, I end up always with, like, digestion problems on tour because there's no – it's really hard to get enough fiber. And so things just kind of stop. Mm. You know, around here, I'm pretty much, like, not to be gross, but I'm, like, clockwork because it's like you wake up and you have, like, granola and blueberries and almond milk and just all this stuff that your body's just like, thank you, you know, and, like, I'm going to let it all out. But if you're on the road, it's like I'm eating like <laughs> Taco Bell with like a hard oh, shell with just lettuce. You know what I mean? And like no tomatoes. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's just like, where's the fiber coming from? So I have to like, I got to figure out, I haven't nailed that yet. Because mm -hmm. like, I just end up like towards the end of the tour, I always have like a belly because I'm just like bloated. Just like, <laughs> like just cloggage. So much gross food. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. uh, just speaking to Neil Morris recently and he was telling me about um, that he he takes fiber and water in the morning. Oh, that's smart. That yeah. sounds easy. Yeah. Sounds like, like an astronaut solution. Just yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just taking, okay. taking care of it early in the morning. Yeah, and and they tour like, I just saw Neil Morris at Arcata two nights ago oh, here nice. in St. Charles. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he. It was and, a great show. And, oh man, how how like that that show that he did on uh, Cruise to the Edge that was phenomenal. The pool stage one. The pool stage, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, he was telling me he was so emotionally gripped on stage that he was just like it was hard for him to even sing because he was just. Um, wow. You know, yeah, yeah, he was like, "Help me yes, out here." I like yeah. that about. <laughs> you know this, like just to to segue to music a little bit, like mm -hmm. they. I, I'm glad that I've, you know, cause like when I first started mm -hmm. in this genre, I was just kind of like looking around, like who in this genre is like 
really performing and like and and striking an emotional chord mm. and then and like they they do you know he does like yeah. when people people feel i mean it's intensely spiritual obviously mm. subject matter but also when he's not talking about anything you know religious like it's it's still super emotionally charged it's definitely, cool definitely he gets mm-hmm. into it he gets into it and, and i appreciate that so much because it's like please people perform in a way where we don't we couldn't just be listening to a cd mm. you know what i mean or like watching someone just like watching a youtube <laughs> you know what i mean like it needs to it, be like hi we're all here together right. we're looking at each other you know we're sharing a thing yeah mm-hmm. so that's that that's what i got from yeah you know a lot of performers in prague are very uh stand there and play you know (laughs) right yeah i can't even yeah (laughs) yeah district actually moves around so you know yeah yeah. Yeah. it's one one of the things that we do you know yeah that's awesome first time Mm -hmm. i got to catch you guys when we played with you guys in uh proctoberfest oh yeah yeah Yeah. that was one of my that was one of our first shows with the new lineup i think yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like freshly, I think I had like a newborn. Yeah. Right? Like a baby. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I think, yeah, we, we picked you guys up. We picked, you picked me up. Yeah. And I, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> you, I can't remember what we were listening to on the oh, way. Actually, it was Neil Morse. It was? It was Neil Morse. Yeah. <laughs> It was Sola Scriptura. Because you, you, you could be like, it was me too this, who put it this, on. This is the next part. This is the next part. I was just like, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I think my band was apologizing for me. <laughs> it's like, hey, this guy puts on this just 30 minute song as we're going to drive. <laughs> it was pretty great. I mean, that's funny. Yeah, because I did. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I was like super into it because I just like. I, th- I think it was like just a few months before that that my uh, bass player like turned me on to that album, and I was just like, "Oh, nice!" Yeah, so it was like fresh in yeah, the ears. Yeah, exactly. So I was just like, um, I have a funny really story behind that. that comes- just a little side, ta- just a little side tangent. Um, we, we, I I was rem- I remember I was on a date, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and and I for some reason we were talking about music, and I was really into that album. I just started getting into it. And I was so excited about it that I wanted to show it to this girl, right? And so I throw on this Neil Morse, you know, this Neil Morse song, just 30 minutes long. And we're sitting there on her couch, right? On a first date, not awkward. On a first date, yeah, not awkward awkward at all. I I put it on. Could she hang or was she like, She she totally hung, you know, like she was, she expressed interest. And so I I put it on and and she was digging it. And, you know, um, Neil Morse, like he goes full Jesus. Right. And, and he does go full. G- yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. and, and more power to him, you know, he has a message and everything. Um, and, it, and, and it's, it's funny thing is his music is so good and the compositions are so great that like my bass player, who's like totally atheist, like sings along with everything, you know, and because and, it, yeah. it's not alienating. No. Right. No. Like, it's not like, a, yeah, it's like, I, 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 Sometimes, you know, something that's like really has a strong message or like it's hard to find yourself in it mm-hmm. if you don't like align all the way with like that sentiment. But like I find that that's Neil keeps it a little more poetic and a little more open to oh, interpretation, but which refle- is mm-hmm. crucial. It's, anyway. it's, so, it's so important. Reflecting back mm-hmm. on that experience, I was just like, wow, this girl probably thought that I was like trying to convert her. <laughs> yeah. It's just like so – have you accepted Jesus Christ as your right. Lord and Savior? If not, then this is a deal breaker. Coming from like an atheist Jew, it's just like... It's a- <laughs> That's awesome. It, yeah, no, mm-hmm. no, that was really funny. So you mentioned, um, just just to kind of um, conclude on the food thing, um, You do you have any particular things like where you don't eat that far, you know, before going on stage or... What's your policy on that? If you have one, I I really feel like um, if I go if I if I perform too hungry, mm-hmm. I'm more prone to hoarseness. I like to eat a light kind of oily salad or something before, mm-hmm. so I've got that like those lipids kind of like mm-hmm. lubing things up and like I get overly like if I'm too hungry, it like feels acidic and like and just hoarse. So wow. if, if I'm too hungry, and I don't like how my mouth feels when I'm hungry you know what I mean and like I I, I feel like I'm lacking saliva I don't know so but if I eat too much it's a nightmare so Mm -hmm. definitely 
Definitely. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's like okay, you have to strike a balance, but the oils is a good point. That's a yeah. Good point. How about afterwards? Um, afterwards, I've got adrenaline for a long time, mm. but I think that if I don't eat something, I do end up trying to go to bed and I'm too hungry. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's like a necessity only like to sleep, you know, but it's not like a, there's no like eating culture right. in the band after a gig really, because especially since I'm usually excluded because my diet is so like unfun. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, but I will participate in Taco Bell. I would say like we should be endorsed by Taco Bell probably like, as a band. Like <laughs> you're gonna pull Taco Bell like. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, well, yeah. I think we hit up Taco Bell. It's a door. disgusting restaurant, but yeah. um, at least <laughs> it's not a cheese. So much for an endorsement. I <laughs> we're like oh she likes a disgusting restaurant Thanks messages yeah <laughs> well, well i mean if you keep having it so right. you obviously so like it. Yeah. 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 right music. yeah 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 it's convenient that's for sure <laughs> yeah it is. it is but um yeah uh so as far as um <clears throat> So as a diet, that's that's what you're doing. When you're, um, how about fitness? Because you you obviously uh, participate in some fitness. What do, what do you do? I would not say honestly, um, because I I do a lot of push ups. Okay. Just sporadically throughout the day. Just really? Yeah, you know, I just like hop on a rug and just my 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 kids will like climb up on my back <laughs> while I'm doing them, and I'm like, yeah, I feel like wow. gladiator. Um, and then I, but I was obsessed with fitness when I was younger. So mm -hmm. I developed this like intense, uh, like exercise addiction when I was in like fifth and sixth and seventh grade wow. where I, I like did like abs of steel videos, buns of steel videos, thighs of steel videos, just like obsessively in my room, like a little psycho. But then I had like a ripping six pack when I was in seventh grade and like intense muscles all over my body. Mm -hmm. And I just had been kind of like reaping the benefits of that discipline ever since without actually really having to do very much. Yeah. You built a foundation. I built a foundation and now I'm just kind of like, my body just kind of like stays at this size somehow. Yeah. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it, that's funny. It's, 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 it's amazing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, that's kind of like the opposite of what happens if a kid gets like fat early on, you know, like if, right. if, if, if a kid gets heavy, um, what happens is they gain a number of fat cells rather than just size of fat cells. And then they can struggle with their weight their whole life. Right. You know, exactly. so I was a heavy kid, so I had to get into fitness for real. Um, right. Yeah. And, and stay in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now you look great. It looks like you, you <laughs> slayed that long ago. It's an ongoing oh. process. You know, like yeah, if okay. I let myself go, like I mm -hmm. gained weight on that cruise but it was intentional like i kind of like trained a lot and i ate a lot because i still eat. You, it was like something yeah. that you knew was going to happen you didn't want to mm -hmm. have to be like de like depriving yourself on the cruise when you have ice cream on tap <laughs> <laughs> i know the, the band was doing that they were just like 1 a.m soft serve you know and i'm like i can't eat dairy good night you know <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's that, that kept you away <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm sure you're in yeah. other ways, though. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, it's it's hard to have a buffet like 24 hours a day around you. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I I was just kind of trying to just stick it to the um the minstrel, you know, like the artist, yes. the artist restaurant. I was trying to just kind of like, you know, because I don't eat much at home normally, so I was just like, I'm just gonna have three regular meals like a real person. Wow. I was just sitting in that room a lot <laughs> right? because well, they want to make it all so fancy. And it's just like, it doesn't need to be that fancy. You just give me my meal. It's okay. Like right. I just... <laughs> yeah. They make it super fancy and yeah. Uh, and, it, and they feed you like a bird, uh, like a fancy restaurant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But then, but then it's cool because then you don't end up like overeating. So that's know. true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I end up going for some dessert or something after the fact, you know. Oh, nice! Like a little, yeah. like a little one-off dessert. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that was a fun experience on that cruise for sure. Mm -hmm. Is that there. your first time? That was my second time on Cruise to the Edge, but I was also on um, 
Portnoy's cruise in 2014, Progressive Nation at Sea. Was that cool? That was amazing. Nice. It was really cool. We almost played on that cruise, but awesome. It didn't. It didn't happen. But we got a cheaper admission from that, mm -hmm. so that was that was really good. So, just on on fitness, do you travel with any kind of equipment? No, um, no, not at all. Right? I'm fit, like, oh, oh, like musical or like no, exercise no, no. equipment? Yeah, no, not, not at all, right? Mm -hmm. I okay. just like do push ups. Okay, okay. How about the other? And then uh, like planks, and I kind of like try to keep my my like uh, my my belly involved. What on a daily? On a daily, I plank on the daily. <laughs> sounds like I'm shrimp in the gnar yeah, yeah no I'm just, yeah, it's a yeah. good thing to do because like you know core stability mm -hmm. if you ever have to move anything around or anything like that right. it's just very especially for bands who are like on the come up and they really have to carry all their gear and all that like up a flight of stairs mm -hmm. with no elevator like mm -hmm. our last tour all of the all the venues just had horrible loading and like we don't have a crew you know so we're just like and we're all just carrying things upstairs mm -hmm. and then back down. And there it's just go. like, wow, this is a lot. You okay. need grip strength. You need core stability. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you throw out your back and then you right. know, you're, you're, you're playing and it's just you're in pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like I've got a pretty strong core. I can, I can handle stuff. Mm -hmm. I can carry stuff. And I don't have too much uh, physical pain to deal with. I'm not like, oh, my back. You know, everything's pretty sturdy. I think, you know, having to deal with the health issues that you – you do probably made you more conscious of health in general. Mm -hmm. Especially since I was diagnosed when I was six right. and I had like a super sickly childhood. Mm -hmm. Like my childhood was just like, I had a fever 104 for years on end and I would just like lay in bed and hallucinate with this like gigantic fever and my, my joints wouldn't work. And so I had to be like carried around sometimes. I had like, uh -huh horrible ulcers in my mouth I couldn't eat so I was just like real skinny and just like sickly and I and that's I think where I developed like um, my love of poetry and writing songs and and like I would just lose myself in these movies and then like practice in front of the mirror you know and just like develop that like performance kind of and then like and then like do a big reveal once I like left because I also can't be in the sun at all so like I was just like a vampire <laughs> <laughs> vampire loner like just being like listen to this probably music probably fit into the goth culture very well I, yeah. I, I never I, if I had to swing any direction in high school it was definitely more hippie than goth, than goth. Yeah. but uh, yeah but yeah I'm just I'm just a really pale hippie <laughs> like, yeah yeah so, so I mean you've been so it does make you more conscious you, you were, you've been singing and uh, piano, right, since like four. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've been singing and playing piano since I was four years old. Mm-hmm. And like, and really um, performing too. Like when I was younger, like my parents were in a band and they would put me in these situations where I would like sing a song, you know, and oh, wow. it was really cool. So they're musicians There's always too. music going on in my house. And yeah, they're both musicians. And they're um, like a PA, a drum set, keyboards, bass, dr like guitar, everything like set up in the living room at all times ready to go. That's awesome. Yeah, and, a, and like a big grand piano. And I especially started to love it when I started writing songs in high school. Mm -hmm. And like I joined a band with a bunch of my friends. And then, yeah. I know that so you, you know, on the topic of like um... – on family, like you, you, you definitely had support, uh, from them oh, yeah. in being a musician. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They, uh, they always knew that that was what I was supposed to do. Mm. And so there was never any talk of like, don't you want to like, mm. like even school, they were kind of like, don't fail. But like, right. you know, we know that like you, you know, I had a natural love of like English and stuff that benefits as a, me as a lyricist and as a writer. Mm -hmm. And then everything else, I just like didn't fail. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to music school for college, sure, you know, so it was sure. just like, it was just like, I always had a path and, it, and like my parents were like not really too hung up on all the other weird details. Cause they already, you know, I, I was kind of already like on my way. So well, that's good. Just, I feel very lucky. Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing to have. You know, people underestimate the importance of that and, and 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 the support. You know, what makes somebody come up or not come up is really it could be it can hinge on that. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. Cause if you feel like you have to just fight your way, um, you know, you don't understand me, dad, I just want to rock, you know, and he's just like math and you're like, you know, but like, okay. I don't know, like a rebel thing is fine too. I certainly sure. rebelled against my share of it, like basically everything. Right. But, uh, but, but that's not something I had to rebel against. They were just like, oh, yeah, right that's on, good. rock up. Yeah. That's good. That's good, yeah. I mean, I found myself screaming in a microphone between like 10 and 16 years old. I sang before I played guitar, so. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, and, yeah, it was like rebel, totally rebel, like, you know. <laughs> right, yeah. My neighbors loved me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, Sounds good, Alex. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you ended up, you know, f being in the finals of uh, American Idol. How did that semi finals? Happen? Semi finals. Yeah. How did yeah. That okay. <laughs> Top twenty. Um, it's a crazy. I hopefully I can sum it up quickly. But um, mm -hmm. in two thousand six, speaking mm -hmm. of health, I for the first time ever got vaccinated and traveled to Brazil. I had every intention of like traveling around the Amazon mm -hmm. with my then boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Um, I get there and I like almost died. Like I had a very bad adverse reaction to the yellow fever vaccination and all of my organs started to fail. Wow. So my parents got this call and they were like, you need to come down here and say goodbye. Like she's not going to make it. And so then they flew down to Brazil I somehow recovered. They were like, if she survives, she'll be brain dead. That didn't happen. So I'm okay. And then my uncles saw me sing on this cruise that we went on um, years prior. And they were just like, you need to, you need to audition for American Idol. And I was just like, yeah, okay. I've never seen it. And I don't really know <laughs> like anything about pop culture. I'm like a weird jazz music school kid. I don't know it in the world. You know, my dad's a jazz musician. I was just like, oh, good, okay, cool. So I auditioned, you know, post near death experience mm. style. And I just kept making it further and further and further. And I was just like, oh, wow. Because everybody around me like knew they had a strategy. They had their stories all planned out. They had like, you know what I mean? Like it was like this big, you know, they, they were like, well, this contestant in season four sang this. And then they, you know, like they had like this whole mm -hmm. plan. And I was just like. I don't know what I'm doing here. So I somehow made it to top 20 wow. in 2007. And uh, it was great because it was a um, it was my first experience really singing and not playing an instrument at the same time. Mm. Normally, normally, I always was playing piano. And so mm. I felt so awkward in my body oh, yeah. standing there. Yeah, like, I don't know. Wow. Like, like I thought I, I either had, <laughs> yeah, I thought I either had to like look good or sound good and I couldn't marry them. I couldn't marry the, uh, those two approaches. So yeah, it was good for me though. Cause now I, cause now I feel very connected and I don't need to play an instrument to, uh, to feel comfortable on stage. Yeah. You're also making all kinds of moves up there now. <laughs> yeah. And I've developed like a dancing style that, yeah, that, that just kind of helps me find my way through the music. That's really complicated. And I kind of just like memorize how it, like how it moves sure. and then I can find my place in it, you know? Sure. 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 Yeah. I recorded you guys at, uh, on the pool stage at, uh, Oh, cool. Yeah. And you know, even just the, the little clip I have of you in my uh, Instagram story, like you're, you're making interesting moves. You know, so I want to see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll see like one of those summaries, those highlight reels. Uh, oh, it's in a highlight. Yeah, it's in a highlight. Yeah, I'll, so. I'll have to go find it. And yeah, so <laughs> we always want to look at photos of ourselves. Like, oh, how did how did I know? <laughs> you know, we didn't become musicians because we don't have questionable self esteem. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I mean that's that's definitely something I discuss here, you know, like and and how, yeah. you know, like mental health in I general. Mean, yeah. So let's talk about mental health for a little bit. Um, what do you uh, deal with, and what, how do you um, solve any kinds of issues that you deal with on that mm -hmm. topic? Yeah. Um, so I am very passionate about mental health. I've had therapy on and off throughout my life. You know, I have um, kind of a colorful childhood and um you know just uh some different stuff has happened in my life that's been pretty intense and um 
it's definitely helped me as an artist, uh, you know, draw from a very deep emotional well and, you know, connect to really extreme levels of pain and joy, you know, in the human experience. But that does kind of make me predisposed to some um, unhealthy uh, strategies, particularly when it comes to relationships. Mm. Um, I would not say overall I have like a hard time with, you know, addiction. Like um, I'm not really, I don't really have much of an addictive personality when it comes to like substances, Mm. but I have developed unhealthy patterns when it comes to relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say Overall, I just have a very hard time not being in one. Mm. And then I just like, I'm a little desperate to be in one. And then I make not the very best choice because it's like, quick, 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 quick. You know, like it's like, mm. that's not, that that's such an important, in, in a lot of ways, who you are with and who you choose to be your person is more important than like what you do for a living. Right. Because like, I mean, it's just like, you're especially if you're living together and you're always together. I've got two kids, mm. you know, and so, I mean, so I am like really freshly broken up right now. Like we're even talking like three days wow. ago. So I'm in, I'm in heavy duty, like do it right this time. You know what I mean? Like, right. just like, just silence the noise. Don't message and, you know, just like, keep it, keep it mm-hmm. tight, you know, and just keep it like with my kids. I don't know. So that, that's my thing that I struggle with is just kind of like knowing how to just like fly solo. Right, and you take uh, like be comfortable with it. You're in therapy and not getting really shook because I have to. Yeah, I am in therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, it started as like a couples therapy situation, and then we started kind of seeing our own. And then now I'm like, was, I'm just going to keep it. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm going I'm going there in a couple hours today, there so I'll know. have lots to talk about. So you go <laughs> uh, on like a weekly or or what? Yeah, probably like I'm going to probably go down to like every other week just to like check in and just run some things by him, you know, be like, all right, so I did this. What do you think? Sure. Do you approve? You know? Sure, sure. Yeah. And and, uh, and how, how has that helped you like since you started that? Um, I I have like different therapists mm-hmm. to to serve different purposes. So if I need like a really like tough, like a tough like um, someone to really kind of straighten me out big time. If I feel like I'm super off the rails and I need somebody to like mm. kind of judge me a little bit, <laughs> I know who to call. And then if I need somebody that's going to like give me a lot of information and statistics and research and you know what I mean? And just kind of like numbers that I can kind of um, wrap my mind around to mm-hmm. minimize my situation a little bit right. uh, or not minimize, but just kind of like make me feel like, okay, like I'm just like a person just trying doing my best in the world. You know, sure, just and like it's, it's not as bit. unique as mm-hmm. you can kind of like be like, oh, what I'm going through is so special. And it's like, mm, you know, right. actually, there's a lot of people probably going through exactly what you're going through. And it's don't you know, it's not all that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so I've, it um, it's been really helpful. what you're feeling inside. Yeah. Yeah. And, and depending on what I think I need. So that's good. Yeah. I think that there there should be an absolutely no shame in in seeking help because even just like, yeah, I mean, cause if you're raised in a certain way, it's hard to see, it's hard to see another way of looking at things mm-hmm. unless you get outside opinions. Right. So. Yeah. Therapy. Yeah. There's like a stigma and there shouldn't be because, um, it's just a useful thing for people, especially highly productive right. and, you know, everyone could use some time to reflect, you know, with someone like that who just listens. Yeah. Right. And also like, I mean, I would never want, I would never expect myself to be able to like build a deck without like watching a tutorial about it sure. or like, you know what I mean? Or just like training yourself on how to like build something, mm-hmm. you know, really well-rounded and really healthy mm-hmm. without like, and like what, you know, we can't just rely on our upbringing to solve all of those problems or all those issues and like give us all those skills. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why not just like seek information whenever you can about being a person in the world have, um, any kind of <laughs> mindfulness or spiritual practice yeah i do i just i have a lot of energy and so when i stop to be mindful or stop to meditate or even just to nap or anything i tend to be like not let myself do it for very long because i'm just like eh, i should be doing stuff mm. <laughs> so was that's one thing where... i'd like i'd like to get better at i'd like to get better at kind of like being mindful was there a time where you 
did have a little bit of a mindfulness practice, like a meditation practice, or that's not something you really work on too much? I don't think I ever have. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, my last relationship, he meditated pretty regularly Mm -hmm. and I, and I start, I feel like when we first started our relationship, like I would meditate with him, but I was just kind of like looking around, like, am I doing this right? Like, I don't (laughs) Like, I don't know. It's one of I, the best things that's it's not the most that comes natural. misinterpreted. It's often just not. People misinterpret the idea. Like they think that they have to sit there and not think and all of right. these things. When My brain is just like. That's, like yeah, that's everyone's stuff. brain. If you sit there Easy. and you set the intention, I'm going to sit here and try to focus on the present moment. If mm-hmm. the mind is going, as long as you realize it's going, you're meditating, right? So even if the okay. whole time you're you're thinking, and then like in 20 minutes you you have five seconds of clarity, that's a successful meditation. It's oh, a, okay. It's a practice, and then after like yeah. a few weeks, then it start you see, start to see the benefits of it. Which are what? Um, biggest benefit for me is you have a gap in between what occurs in your life. And your response to it, it's like you get, mm-hmm. it's like you get the oh, thing, and then and then you get to choose your response rather than being oh, reactive. I love that. I love that. It's very cool. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that people that the, that it, it makes you kind of like the more you meditate, the more you can see like your emotional reactions kind of popping up like a balloon in the room, and mm-hmm. like you don't have to reach for it. You know what I mean? Like you can kind of be like, Oh, okay. In one see word, how I'm feeling. in one word, equanimity, right? So you become equanimous, you become just even leveled and just respond to things constructively. Yeah. And non reactively. Mm-hmm. That that's a major thing that I have worked on with as a mom, you know what I mean? Just like, just kind of like observing it. Okay. All right. You know, I'm not going to like, Ah, or, you know, just like, you know, just like not give a big reaction immediately, mm-hmm. just kind of like observe and sure. So on that, on being a mom and just on family in mm-hmm. general, you tour, mm-hmm. how does that, how do you deal with uh, being a mother and being on tour? I, br- I brought them when I was nursing mm-hmm. and then not anymore. So I don't, I don't bring them with me because if we were doing the kind of tours where we had like a crew and like a bus and it was like kind of, mm-hmm. kind of, kind of sweet, you know, maybe we could bring an au pair, you know, or mm-hmm. somebody to help. But we don't, we don't do tours like that. <laughs> sure. Like we're, we're still, even though we've been around for 10 and a half years, we're still, mm-hmm. you know, on that struggle bus a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, um, we, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm lucky that both my kids have really great dads that um, are okay with taking them the whole time I'm gone. And then Mm -hmm. because they, because we all live nearby and my family is really big and my parents are super young and energetic and helpful. And, you know, um, they, if the dads can't cover something, they know that they can just call anyone in my family and, and they'll all, everybody Mm -hmm. helps out. Do you video them from, from the um, van sometimes I'll, I'll do like a FaceTime with my daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but my three-year-old, um, Julian does not get it. He gets uh, really sad. Aww. He's just like, what? Oh. <laughs> Kid, I, you can't, he'll be like, you can't kiss me. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I know. It's so sad. I know. That's the hardest part. And, um, we don't do like months or anything like that. I mean, we tour, mm-hmm. I think the longest tour we've ever done was three weeks and we came home in the middle. So, oh. yeah. So, I mean, we don't, we're not out there. I have a job that, um, keeps us from being able to, cause I'm, I have a, like an event band that I lead mm-hmm. here and we do a lot of gigs and most Saturdays I'm kind of booked. So, I mean, we have examples coming up where we're going to be like on the road, I'm going to come back and do my gig. Wow. And then we can back out again. Wow. Mm-hmm. And how far out it's, would that be? Like, has, has there been a time where you had to just like travel a significant amount back to, for that gig? Yeah. Yeah. I have. 
yeah. So it's it's complicated, but but my job, my my gig is so great mm. and it's so steady, and I'm a single mom. I mean, sure. I'm not really because I I'm a co-parent. Sure. You know what I mean? So I'm not, it's not like it's, I'm, I'm with them 50% of the time. So I'm truly not like a single mom, That's good. but I'm the only one making money for mm. us in this house, this mm. nice house I live in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, lots of mirrors. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah. I think they're pretty. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what was I saying? I don't know. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, so that, that's good. And, and when you're on tour, like w what are some important relationships and how do, what do you like, kind of anchor yourself on as far as that's mm -hmm. concerned? Um, besides your, your children, you, you call your parents mm -hmm. or some no. friends? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say I text a little bit with friends, but mm -hmm. I, I like district 97. E each of the guys are like my brothers and mm -hmm. we kind of disappear into, into that world. You know sure. what I mean? And we're just like, we were like laughing so much and like just mm. listening to tons of podcasts and listening to music and just like talking and arguing a little bit. Well, not <laughs> but sure. I mean, it's just like, yeah, but like we get, I think we all kind of look forward to that time together. Mm -hmm. and, you know, none, like we're not just like on our phones, ignoring each other the yeah. whole time. It's, it's very important to have a good relationship with your bandmates because mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you're with them sometimes more than with your family, you know? Yeah. It's true. I mean, I've definitely spent more time, like, I haven't done a trip with, like, anyone in my family where we're, like, in a car every day, mm. you know, like, like navigating new hotels, navigating venues, navigating load-in, where is there beer in the green room, you know, what percent off appetizers do we get, do, you know, just, like, all these, like, like uh, little tiny decisions you have to make together, and we're, like, making them as a team. Right, right. Like, it's, a, it's a very unique situation. So when you're at home, um, just to be productive, like how do you manage your time? What's your, do you have like a routine that you fall into when you're home? Um, yeah, so I have the unique opportunity to be um, with my kids like one day and then the next day I have to myself and then I'm with them the next day and then the next day. I have, so we do like, we almost like trade every day. Wow. So when I'm with them, Mm -hmm. it's all about them. I don't multitask. I don't, you know, need to get a bunch of work done and while they're watching TV. I mean, I'm really like with them. Commit to them at that time. Yeah. And so like, well, I mean, we will watch movies and, or something like that together, but I'm not like, you know, so I kind of save that for them. And then when I don't have them, I have tons of meetings that I do for, you know, music. I, I practice a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Practice piano. I also play guitar. That guitar has probably been more of my focus lately, just because I feel like I have so much to learn. Mm. Um, I'm just like really trying to like graduate from like campfire status to like <laughs> knowing some fun chords that I can write with. Hopefully, sure. So um, you, you, I really like writing music on guitar. Nice. How long have you been playing um, guitar at this point? Well, I took my first lesson in seventh grade, mm. but I feel like I just learned a bunch of stuff and then like didn't learn anything new right. for like 10 years. You know what I mean? I was just like, I, I'm going to play House of the Rising Sun till the day I die, you know? <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> you know? So now, but then I started really writing on guitar in 2012. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a whole album that of songs, of nine songs that came out that I wrote in a very short succession, um, all because of guitar. Now, when you write, um, do you have a muse? Do you have like... What, what, what inspires you or does it just come? So, so it's kind of two different things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll happen out of nowhere and I'll ha I'll get a song in my head and like, I've never heard that before. Mm. That must be mine. That mm. must be a new thing. And then I'll try to grab my phone or grab something or, you know, uh, do a voice memo of it before it goes away. Sure. Sometimes. And I don't know why this is the case, but those things happen mostly when I'm in a bathroom with the fan on, not, and not necessarily like <laughs> taking a dump, but like, you know, it's like, it's like just like clearing the steam or like I'm drying my hair and the fans on. It's just like all this like ambient kind of like sure. white noise. And then I feel like my brain can kind of like fill in or like I'm, I'm finding tones in there somewhere Interesting. and like 
yeah, like I don't know, like or um, I have a lot of no, like sound machines in my house, like really? so, so, so the kids can sleep and I can like be loud and they don't wake up. Oh, that's interesting. Um, mm-hmm. so, so rather I just, than like, removing the, noise, you add noise so you can sort I of add noise yeah. and I can hear more noise. I can hear more music. And then another time, I'll mm-hmm. just sit down and start improvising, um, and and that's when a lot of songs are written too. That's cool. So sometimes a song is written just in the amount of time that it takes to play the song. Right. I mean, and I'm just like, and I'll have to go in and like make the lyrics better, sure. you know, but the, but the melody and the form and the, the chords and stuff sure. are usually. And they come in different <laughs> orders. Sometimes like uh, melody comes first, sometimes lyrics come first or how, how does it work? Lyrics rarely come first. It's usually melody. Yeah. 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 Lyrics are, mm-hmm. that's a different thing I'm doing. Sure. You know I mean? like that's more thoughtful that takes a little more time to really kind of come up with the, you know, I feel like I'm like looking up and thinking about lyrics Sure. and then, but then like in the music, it's just kind of like, I'm, and I'll just be like, okay, come to me. I know you're here. I know you're here. Just come sure. to me, whatever you got, whatever you got. And if, if it's, if, maybe it's going to be stupid. You know what I mean? Like who knows, but I put up, but I'll, I'll figure that out later. You know, mm-hmm. what do you tend to write about topically? Um, All kinds of shit. Like, like the human experience is so ex- so interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I love to use um, really elaborate metaphors um, mm-hmm. for like an, or analogies or just things to kind of veil what I'm saying. It's like one of my favorite tools. So, and I love it when people have. I love hearing a variety of. Like if I show someone a song and then they all give me what they think it's about and it's all different, mm-hmm. that's like for some reason that gives me the best pleasure because then it's like it's not like it's not like reading someone my journal. Sure. You know what I mean? It's like it's like okay, this is my experience. I'm gonna like frame it in this way. Mm-hmm. What do you think this is? You I know? think it's beautiful, and you know we get what we need to get out of a song, and if yeah word it in such an ambiguous way then it's interpretable and so more people can connect yeah more Mm -hmm. people can connect and find their Mm -hmm. own meaning in it and connect to it in a unique way so i think that's that's a beautiful thing Mm -hmm. and i'm not just writing songs for myself you know what i mean i'm writing i'm writing songs to hopefully have a shared experience with Mm -hmm. other people and i think that my when i was younger i i I just i really had a feeling i would get into some sort of psychology Mm -hmm. profession like if you know if but then, I, but then I started writing songs, and I found that I was really affecting people emotionally more effectively. <laughs> like, right. Write a song, share it with twenty people instead of having twenty therapy sessions. You know, I can just like write it and then like keep writing the next one. You know. Yeah, so. that's a it's a good way to deal with things, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I always felt like a like a like a helper, like a. Um, my parents used to kind of like come to me for advice. Do you ever find uh, trouble like when you want to sit down and write and nothing's coming, like kind of a block thing or no? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, I feel like if I ever struggle with writer's block, it's just fear of things being horrible, you know? Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, like, um, it's it's a vicious cycle because the longer that it's been, the worse you are at it. Mm-hmm. And then and then you go to start and you're like, see, I don't have this gift anymore. I'm gonna go wash the wash the kitchen floor. You do know, you think, like. The... <laughs> <laughs> but then the more you do it, the more naturally, and the, the less of a big deal it is. Right. If you just do it all the time. I'm sorry, you were going to say something. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, uh, on that, do you feel like it's a self judgment thing that? when you just don't allow it and you kind of cut that short that you start judging mm-hmm. everything that, that comes out and that becomes like a perpetual issue. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's like, um, judging a fetus before it's born. It's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, you can't do it. Like you can't even like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like right. you, can, you can't even swallow yet. Right. You know, like, it's like, no, cause it's like, it's a, it's a thing. It's a tiny thing. You got to let it, come out like gotta let it grow gotta feed it gotta like that's right let it be itself for a little bit because it probably has something to say but just don't don't get rid of it yet mm-hmm. i'm not i'm not talking 
Let's talk about abortion. No, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just like, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's let's like go there. Bring this to because mm -hmm. that can get quickly political and I don't you know, we don't need to we don't need to post, ever get political. Post birth okay. abortion and things like that. Oh yeah. Oh, That's just like yeah, watch your analogies. <laughs> your analogies can get get you right into some sketchy territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when, when it comes to the business end of things, right, and how, you, you know, you have this band that is a regular thing and that's been a regular gig for you for how long? Ten and a half years. Yeah. So besides mm -hmm. District, you have that Saturday thing that, that, oh, band right. that you're leading. Yeah, yeah the mm -hmm. same. They both happened at the same time. Oh, really? So, mm. yeah, it's crazy. So can I tell you about the craziest summer of my life? Go for it. Um, it was in 2008. Mm -hmm. Um, I was engaged to be married. Um, and, uh, and then my sister died the day before I was supposed to get married. Oh she my died she, like my only sibling, my younger sister, she was 22. She died of a drug overdose oh. the day before I was supposed to get married. So the wedding was canceled. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody was already in town, so we just had a funeral instead. The, um, and then the person that I was supposed to marry, I quickly realized I was marrying him to set a good example for my sister of how to stick with things. Oh my God. And so then when she died, you know, I don't, um, I like this about, I've, isn't like the belief in Judaism a little bit like when people die part of them become get, goes into you mm -hmm. do you do you identify with that at all um i i'm not familiar with that sentiment but that's that's interesting okay yeah so like that's how i felt wow. i felt like she died and then she a part of her went into me and it was just like do what you want why are you doing this wow. this isn't what you want you were just doing this to try to set a good example from mm. for my crazy ass you know what i mean and right. so it's like okay lauren you're right i'm not gonna do it so we canceled it, and then I moved out, and um, I bought, and I signed an, a lease for an apartment with no income. Uh, and then that day, I got a call from my from the company that I've been working for, you know, like the, the corporate thing, mm -hmm. and he offered me a full time position as a singer. Wow. And bam, I had fifty five gigs in my calendar, you know, wow. uh, four hundred bucks a pop. I mean, it was just like. Wow. Okay. Awesome. And then at that same time, um, district 97, I, I opened for them mm -hmm. as a solo act and I saw them performing as an instrumental band mm. and I was just like, and my sister was gone and, she, and it was so, and she was so into metal and so into just mm. like, just like that raw aspect of, of mm. people. And I was a little more like folky singer songwriter -y kind of, mm -hmm. um, and I saw them perform and I was just like, if Lauren was still alive, she would be the lead singer of this band wow. and I was just like I need to do this and so I did it and I was just like Jonathan I want to be the singer in your band and he was like okay so he started writing songs for me <laughs> and I just kind of like have been you know channeling my my rock star sister ever since but now it's become who I am mm. you know but but it all started because I was just like I need an outlet for the energy that I know she still has, because I still felt her everywhere. And I was wow. just like, she needs an outlet. I'm this now. I'm different now. You know, I don't have to set a good example for anyone anymore. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, and then I like immediately also got pregnant after that too. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. I know. And so I just feel like my, my, my daughter, I accidentally call her Lauren a lot. Wow. This is my sister's name. I know. So I just feel like there's like, there's a lot of my sister's soul and my daughter too. And there's weird similarities. They have the same big toe and mm. they both get like little sweat beads on their nose when they're hot. I've never yeah. seen that before. Like little beads of sweat. Oh, wow. And then they have the same eyebrows. Wow. So pretty, yeah. That's... I'm very lucky that, yeah. Yeah. And I was able to kind of mm. like replace that loss with like such a cool, awesome kid named yeah. Eliza. That, that must have been such a roller coaster. That sounds, uh, that, that's, that's pretty intense. Yeah. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, it was a while ago, but I, I, um, it's still, it's still so weird, yeah. you know, but, uh, but it's, I, it, I, time is amazing. You know? Yeah. It's unfortunate, you know, people, we lose loved ones who lose over drugs and things like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
such a waste. But I mean, mm. when something feels good, it's really hard to, the, the, the brain changes sure. and the stop, the stop impulse goes away. Right. The executive right. functioning is a no longer a thing. So you're just like, okay, I know I'm about to like, I know that if I do this, I could potentially go to jail. I could right. lose all my friends and family. I could potentially die. But like that part of the brain is just like, you never know. Right. Right. Yeah. My brother you know, struggled anyway. with that for a long time. So your brother. Yeah. So I, oh, I, wow. it's, it's totally, it's, it, 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 it hits home for me for sure. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, fortunately we didn't lose him, but you know, it's, it was, it came close, uh, lots of times, mm -hmm. you know, now he's in a better yeah. place. Oh, good. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. So awesome. I love to hear that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, come so out the other side light at the end of the tunnel yeah definitely mm -hmm. definitely good you know but of course brought a lot of grief over time um yeah did you find that your family got sick like all yeah. your relationships in your family like around that oh yeah oh, yeah. yeah it's it like destroys everybody families. yeah yeah well everybody just loses their perspective of what they're capable of changing and what they're not and what enabling is and what you know like what's making it worse what's yeah, you know really hard on my mother yeah so I, yeah mm -hmm. and my parents are, will never be the same right oh, yeah no. no yeah but they're but they work on it i would say considering they're both doing really well but they're mm -hmm. you know they both still feel like they could have done something yeah you know it's just like you don't know about that she was hell bent. <laughs> she was completely hell bent. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so she, young she too. Was, she was, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, well, here you are. You, know, <laughs> you could still hold your head up high and all that, and 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 make the most of. Uh, you know, now the attention shifted to you, your parents' attention, which I didn't really have before. You know, I mean, because it's like when when there's a there's a um, well, I did when I was sick. You know, like when I was like a sick kid, but then like my, my sister started getting really sick, you know, with her addictions and her mental health um, in when she was in junior high. Wow. And then um, and then all we would ever talk about was her. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's just like you're not going to talk about the weather when the when there's like a piece of furniture on fire in the living room. Right. You know what I mean? You're not going to be like, oh, so how was your day? Right. You know, right. um, yeah, I just consumed so yeah. family life completely. Right. Completely. Yeah. yeah. So now, so now both my parents are very focused on me. They're very focused on my kids. I'm not saying, I mean, I would give anything to have her still here, mm. even if it meant that nobody focused on me because that's not what it's about. But you know, there's like a, we all have a chance to kind of like get our, get our health together mm -hmm. and be healthy people and not be so like codependent, right. you know, as, uh, which is, is something that happens to the families of people in addiction. Right. Yeah, I, I think we all were anyway before she even was. Sure. Mm -hmm. So when you when you uh, so you 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 started those two bands, those two projects at the same time, and and mm -hmm. since then, have you taken on anything else, or maybe started any kind of other project, any passive income from anything? Oh yeah. Um. So I do have three solo albums out. Mm -hmm. Um. And they generate a nice little income because I still get quarterly like publishing mm -hmm. checks, um, which is awesome. Sorry, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I also I teach music too. Mm -hmm. So oh. I have like a um, I teach a bunch of uh, kids and adults as well oh. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They come over and they sing, and I love being a mentor to some of these girls that are like right at that age where like things start getting kind of hard, you know, like they start to be kind of lose, uh, lose their, that child, that childish innocence of like, they still feel like they are just inherently enough. You know, right. sometimes like as you get older, like it's like, Oh, am I not enough? So I like to like be like a strong, like weirdo lady in their lives. and like, <laughs> you're going to be great. You know, you sound so good, you know, and they do. I, I'm working with unbelievably gifted kids. That's awesome. So, Mm-hmm. So fun. Teaching is great. Um, yeah, I've been teaching for like 16 years at this point. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. God, this is just like I'm. I've only been doing it for a little over a year. So this is huge for me. Yeah. Like steadily, I've done it here and there. Where I'm like, oh God, I don't have any gigs. I better get some lessons. You know. Sure. And then and then I quit when I get busy. But like this has been like a solid year of like of really teaching. I love it. it gives you some purpose. Sure. It's not just like ego music. You know. It's like. Have you done it from from the road? No, okay. that's a good idea. Like yeah. Skype. 
yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been doing that. Well, you know, on tour or while traveling, it's something that I bring maximize up. all your moments to make yeah, money in. Exactly. I mean, the the guys that <laughs> played. Smart. Yeah, I I got to interview a few years ago, um, in a different context, but that that was the. Uh, John Ferrara, the bass player of Consider the Source. Actually, yeah, they mm -hmm. also played there for Oktoberfest that year. Um, oh, yeah, I remember them. Yeah, they were awesome. And mm -hmm. they're always awesome. <laughs> and so consider they... Consider the Source. Consider the Source, yeah. They, they, oh, I have a story about that. Oh, yeah? Is, they, uh, is that the one, like, they, they dab really hard, right? I shouldn't say that in your podcast. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> They like gave me a thing and I was just like, oh, cool. Yeah, I smoke weed. This is chill. Yeah. Smoked it. I've never been that high in my life. I <laughs> tried to do a gig and I think I just invented all new melodies. The whole show. I was just like, I can't. I don't want to be boxed in by these melodies. I'm going to make up a brand new one. So I'm just, I'll never Got I'll never think of that as anything. But yeah, you can you can leave that or cut it, whatever you want. <laughs> I think it's funny. Marijuana is, marijuana is harmless. You know, yeah, yeah. Deep in stuff. It's true. Unless you're dabbing with consider the source, in which case, not benign. Not benign. <laughs> then you really start considering the source. I was. I was. <laughs> I'm a person. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there is, uh, you know, I was going to say that, um, so I was talking to him about similar topics and they actually set two days that they don't play Monday and Tuesday and they fill mm -hmm. those days up with lessons. Oh, wow. And, and they do they all teach. They all teach. Uh, there's only three of them. So they, they all teach and they, right. they do uh, clinics and workshops on the road as well. Mm -hmm. So they manage to, that's awesome. And since a lot of their audience are musicians, cause Prague, um, right. <laughs> Cause Prague, right? They, oh my god! Yeah, then that you know they have a good audience for that, and they advertise mm -hmm. it on their website, and uh, they think, I don't know if they advertise it at the merch table, but they might. It's a good idea. That's smart. It That's is. That's smart. I don't know. I don't think anybody else in the band teaches mm. me. But how do you deal with that? Le that like delay because you can't warm up together. You can't sing together. Right. Well, it's like. Mm -hmm. I could see teaching for a long time uh, when it comes to guitar, right? I I can, okay. I can I can explain to people things uh, as far as how to move their hands. Complete beginners, a little tough. Um, right, because it's a lot yeah. about showing. Right, I might have to physically move their fingers. I'm physically moving fingers a lot. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, mm -hmm. but I I've figured out ways of articulating certain ideas in so many different you know, wordings that, that I can tell somebody in a very specific way on how to move their hand, C shape oh, and cool. all that, you know, and, and it's, it's worked out pretty well. And especially mm -hmm. anyone who's been playing for a few weeks, totally fine. The only thing is I can't play exactly at the same time with them, but that's just a right. limitation right now. And when we get into 5g, I don't think that'll be a problem. I think we're actually going to get to a point and this is, this is an interesting technology coming because we're, we're getting to a point where we're going to have almost zero latency internet connections be, and we're going to be able to video with people almost live like whoa cool yeah. that'll be good so i could be like yeah. la 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 and they could like sing with me instead yeah, of like with you la, 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 right. la. exactly exactly and i mean i the, the i i've been thinking about that and i want to be kind of part of this movement if you would you know i can create an app say that you know people can jam together live mm. over the internet yeah, or even absolutely or even perform together like let's say you know you, you have a band desperately performing together live you know doing a stream and uh mm -hmm. you know, that could be that could be great absolutely or even band practice like you know if you live for far away from your bandmates you can literally oh, rehearse so far away from my bandmates you know uh, live like yeah. you know yeah really that in the boonies Sure. Yeah. Sure. And that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think it'll allow a lot of uh, interesting collaborations to take place, and so it's, we, we yeah, with interesting technology to come. Um, it, it's an cool. exciting time to be alive. Nice. I'll have to make sure to not cancel my lessons when I'm on tour. 
Yeah, I, I, you know what it is? I have a conversation early in the process where I tell them, hey, sometimes I travel, but I have, you know, I teach online and mm-hmm. you don't lose any value. I, I, I frame it in a good way. You, you get it from the convenience of your own home. Right. You so get- any sort of like drawback is kind of canceled out because you just could, you were like probably not wearing pants. Right. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so like it's the, you just know. Keep the, it up. I, the, well, one thing is the convenience. The other thing is um, I have this scheduling system that automatically schedules, but they can also go online and download material. So, oh, yeah. You're so, like next level. Yeah, I'm just well, like, I'm like yeah. taking pictures of books and like put it on your iPad. <laughs> I can share screen, you know, so I can go, oh. and, you know, and, and yeah. So you figured out a way to, you know, give value. Um, mm-hmm. So then you can make it like uh you know, mobile thing, then you can reach out further with your lessons because then you're not limited to your, right. little, uh, to your area. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I'm like thinking, like, do I want more students? Like, I don't. I don't want more. Well, on that topic, yeah. I mean, you can only trade so much of your time for money, which is why I asked, you know, if there's any right. passive sources besides the right. uh, the checks you're getting. Because, um, mm-hmm. like, for example, let, let's say you have a lot of ideas about singing. You can create a product or a service or something like that. True. That would be really smart. I'm not like the most business savvy gal. Mm-hmm. I'm just like kind of like, you know, I, 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 it would be nice to, to, to nail that down a little more and, and mm-hmm. generate more income for sure. Yeah. I like your, your like scheduling thing for this is pretty official. I felt like I was just like, it's like more official than like any doctor's office. I've ever, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a part it's of like, it is just reminders. Like, it's like, it's coming up. It's like, oh yeah, it is cool. Yeah, yeah, no, and I have the same thing with the lessons. So, oh, know, cool. So, so students are. You'll have to like share what that is at least. I can oh, up yeah. my game a little bit. Oh, sure, sure. I don't even have a website anymore. Mymusicstaff.com. dot com. My music, my music stuff. Staff. Staff. Yeah, my music okay. staff. It's like twelve bucks a month, and it's um, I'm not getting paid by my music staff for mentioning this, but they should, uh, you know. <laughs> They should sponsor. Like it. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but it's it's useful because like over there you can like upload documents. Um, cool. Yeah, and have them assigned individually or to everybody. You have your schedule on there. It automatically puts it syndicates it to your calendar, um, and it can automatically message them. You can even charge people on there. So mm. it's uh and it's cool and it records. That's cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. It tracks it your stuff. income. Yeah, it's really really helpful. Yeah. So it's just the more systems that you could put in place to kind of remove your time from the matters. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just making money on tour sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah, so. I think that because that that's since the, we we have an interesting thing and I talk about this a lot, where since we stopped making money from selling music because that's not right. much of a thing. Um, we have to like have a fragrance. Exactly. Yeah. yeah <laughs> just, like, doing just, like, that. just lots of, yeah. Yeah. You had to be real famous for that, but yeah. Well, I mean, just weird, weird other stuff. Yeah, exactly. So we've been forced to like tour more. So we've sort of exchanged mm-hmm. a lot of passive income for active. Um, and okay. one way to counteract that since like MySpace came about, <laughs> excuse me, since MySpace came around, we've started to have access to our audience directly. Right. And having that access and knowing what we can create for them. And especially with new tools and technologies, you can market directly to them, have a subscription service or a merchandise that's limited edition and, and, and all kinds of different things that we can create uh, for that audience. And they're bought in, you know, it's uh, right. It's, so, yeah, the, we often don't have business minds as artists, but we do have entrepreneurial minds. Yeah. Yeah. Because the so entrepreneur as... and the artist are one temperament from a psychological right. perspective. So right. That, right. it's helpful. Yeah, I definitely got a lot of ideas. I start all kinds of stuff, mm. but then like, is it really like really, really planned out? No, not really. Like, yeah. is it, do, do, do I see it to completion? Not all the time. Right. You know, like it's like, I get all these great brainstorming sessions. Like that's when my, right. you know, I'm just like, oh my god, and then I could involve mm-hmm. this, and I could have like a weekly showcase of, sure. you know, I'm like, oh, like, give kids meaning, keep kids off the streets, you know, just like all these right. like global, like wow. Right. And then it's like, anybody want to watch a movie? 
we have no short shortage of creativity and of, of like ideas of starting these things, but actually True. we're not so high in conscientiousness. <laughs> so yeah, get, getting it off the ground is tough. So, I mean, maybe working with somebody who is more on the, uh, right. more of a linear Follow thinker. Through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be huge. Yeah. So partnerships with people with opposing, uh, skills and stuff would probably be a good idea <laughs> right to balance it out sure I would say district 97 has got a, gotten a lot more collaborative in that way mm. i feel like jonathan is still doing most stuff but but yeah. we've all kind of like developed I mean, what are you guys like have some a of us are a little service. more like yeah we have a subscription service that's helpful it helps pay us you know for um doing tours where maybe we don't have the best guarantee every single show mm -hmm. but we can still give ourselves you know some money to to make it so we don't mm -hmm. So, it's, so our home life isn't going under. Sure. And what what's what's offered in that subscription service? Like what's the uh, – what's um, like You get like vault, exclusive right? – mm -hmm. yeah, it's called Inside the Vault Club. Mm -hmm. um, we send out um, recordings that nobody else gets to hear, mm. um, videos that nobody else gets. Um, you get access to you – know, sometimes we'll, we'll like make a DVD and it's only available for subscribers. That's cool. You know, or like just kind of like we really kind of – hook them up but mm. we're grateful you know it's we like have... patreon but you you just you run it yourselves right yeah exactly it's uh -huh. great i like it that's really and, cool and it's cool and those key holders are so awesome because they get they get like a lot of information about the songs like you know i'll, I'll like write a thing of like what it's about and you know nobody else really gets to hear that description so it brings them closer to the music in general mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very helpful thing. It so, is. Yeah. So what's your long-term goal with your music career? Hmm. Um, do this just hopefully in a bigger way hmm. all the time, you know, mm -hmm. bigger, bigger shows, more fans, more outreach. I think, um, you know, we're, we're not sure about how we're going to go about releasing this next album, but we hope to get a label behind us that, you know, maybe has a bigger outreach than what we've used in the past mm. or what we've had in the past. So we're just trying to grow. Um, but that I, I'd like to have more, just, I want to make more music as an art, like as a solo artist, mm. I would say that that's probably my goal right now. And as my kids get older and as my, you know, I get a little bit more alone time, like that's gonna that's key for me to like really get in that space and stay in that space for as long as it's required to like flush out a song and have it like actually be good, you know? Yeah. Um yeah. Is there anything we didn't happy. touch on? Sure. What? Is there anything we didn't touch on that you, you feel like it's important um, to you? Not really. We touched we touched on a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I tried to really, you know, hit many many yeah. areas, you know, that, that mm -hmm. um under the surface kind of stuff, you know? Totally. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, you shared a lot here. Thanks that for I think, having me. Yeah, I, that I, feel, yeah. I feel like people would get a lot. So if, you, if you've been granted one message that you can share with all musicians, what would it be? Oh my God, the pressure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, oof, one message with all musicians? Mm. My brain's like going blank. Um, I don't know. Uh, What's the first thing that comes to you? I don't, it's so easy to get discouraged mm. and it's so easy to um, develop an ego that is doing far more harm than good. Mm. So keep the ego, the, the ego is the cancer of the art. It's the cancer of the connection and it's like the cancer of all your relationships, including like every little moment with a fan. So mm -hmm. the ego needs to, you're a vessel, be grateful for that. Um, and don't let your ego either like stop you when things aren't going the way that you feel like you deserve or, um, yeah. And, and don't let the ego like stop you before you've had a chance to create something awesome. That's awesome. Very good. Okay. Very good. Glad I came up with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, am I going to be like, oh, wait, I'm going to go. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I have no answer. Yeah. All right, everybody. This is 
uh, Leslie Hunt, and it's been awesome. Check out her band, District 97. And uh, I'll put a lot of notes from this interview in the notes to the interview. <laughs> Great. All Thank right. you so much, Alex. Nice speaking Good to you, Good luck with the podcast. I look Thank forward you to so listening. much. Cheers. Watching. All right. I'll see you Cheers. soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.